Welcome to Mikon's hardware. It's been a really long time since I tested DDR3 memory, and especially DDR3 ECC registered memory. Also, I would not touch this old technology, but a subscriber called Marcus donated me a few memory sticks, and these are DDR3 ECC registered memory. I am very thankful for that. I will assemble a couple of budget computers, sell them, and the profit will be sent to Ukraine for some good cause. So, DDR3 is a rather old memory, and right now we already have DDR4 and DDR5, which are two generations ahead. That's why, assembling a budget computer, I decided to chip out on everything. I could go with Huanan G X99TF motherboard, X99F8 motherboard, or a Huanan G X99QD3 motherboard that support DDR3 memory. But unfortunately, the prices are a bit too high, especially if I want a budget computer. That's why I decided to go the cheapest possible option and went with Machinist X99 PR9 DDR3 version. The DDR3 version has slightly different colors and it is called X99 PR8 instead of PR9. Other than that, the motherboard is identical to what I have reviewed recently on my channel. We are still limited to just two memory channels, but we have decent BIOS that includes resizable bar and memory timings by default. From the motherboard layout you can see that we have absolute bare minimum of functionality, but for a budget gaming computer that's just what we need. CPU selection was a bit painful for me, because of course I wanted to get maximum performance, but at the same time Machinist X99 PR9 or PR8 doesn't have the strongest VRAM and the VRAM heatsink is rather small, so I wanted to be on the safe side and I didn't want to risk selling someone a computer that will burn out later on. That's why I decided to go with EFI 2666 V3. The CPU has 10 cores, 20 threads, 25 MB of L3 cache, maximum turbo frequency 3.5 GHz, but what's most important for me is that a CPU turbos on all 10 cores up to 3.1 3.2 GHz without turbo boost unlock. And yes, I am not going to implement turbo boost unlock in this test because I want to have a stable, safe system that I feel confident selling to others. Due to time constraints, I do not have a possibility to make a detailed comparison between this system and some other configurations, but if you're interested to see what is the topmost maximum performance of EFI 2666v3 on Huanan X99TF motherboard with a turbo boost unlock and quad memory channel support, either DDR3 or DDR4, then leave me a comment down below and I will try to make such comparison. For now, I have tested two graphics cards, because primarily this system will be targeted for gamers. The first one is more reasonable one, AMD RX 6650XT, and the other one is a complete overkill, AMD RX 7900XT. Before I go into the gaming results, let's take a quick look at some synthetic numbers. So, let's check out memory performance using ADA64 benchmark and compare the numbers to EFI 2697v3 results from my previous tests. With the two channels of DDR3 1866, EFI 2666v3 cannot compete with quad channel of DDR4. We get less than 30 GB per second read write and copy speed, while EFI 2697v3 gets more than 60 GB per second memory read, more than 40 GB per second memory write, and almost 60 GB per second copy speed. Memory latency is very similar, with DDR3-1866 CL11 we have about 71.3 nanoseconds and with the EFI 2697V3 that uses DDR4-2133 CL12 we have about 70.9 nanoseconds. Now, in Geekbench 6, Cinebench R23 and Cinebench 2024, the results are pretty much as expected. In Geekbench 6, with one CPU core, we have 1120 points against 1214 points. So, if I 2666v3 without Turbo Boost Unlock with just one CPU core is able to provide almost identical performance to if I 2697v3 with Turbo Boost Unlock. With all CPU cores utilized, we get 65-30 points against 90-24 points. In Cinebench R23, with just one core, we have 774 points against 835 points. 
with all CPU cores under load about 9000 points against 12500 points. And in Cinebench 2024 the results are very similar but the numbers are much lower. With the just one CPU core we get 50 points against 55 points and 554 points against 774 points with all CPU cores utilized. So, if you take into account that if i2697 v3 has 14 cores tested with the turbo boost unlock and quad channel memory configuration, while if i2666 v3 was tested without turbo boost unlock, it has only 10 cores and tested with only two memory channels using DDR3, we can see that the results are pretty good, and that's why I decided to go exactly with if i2666 v3. For gaming, I'm going to start with Alan Wake 2. It is a very GPU demanding game, and even with low graphical preset, RX 6650XT is not able to reach the 60 FPS mark. Instead, we are getting pathetic 2049 FPS. The GPU utilization is above 95% most of the time, so in this case, if i2666 v3 is more than enough. With RX 7900 XT, the performance is doubled. We have 5797 FPS, but GPU utilization stays under 90%, so the old Xeon is not keeping up with the task and the GPU is underperforming. Assassin's Creed Mirage is another single-player title, but it's not as demanding as Alan Wake 2, so here I test medium preset with adaptive quality disabled. RX 6650 XT is good for 4529 FPS. The GPU utilization under this test is mostly staying above 95%, but sometimes it drops under 90%, so there is not much room left for improvements, and while testing Assassin's Creed Mirage, the whole system power consumption is somewhere about 320 watts. The lack of CPU power can be confirmed with RX 7900 XT that barely improves the performance. If i2666 v3 holds it back and we get only 5259 FPS, which is still a very respectable result, but GPU is heavily underperforming. The power consumption rises to 415 watts with this GPU. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, one more very GPU demanding game. With medium graphical preset, RX 6650 XT is fully utilized and is capable of 4959 FPS. Still, there are some occasional drops to less than 90 FPS, so the CPU EFI 2666v3 is somehow bottlenecking the GPU. With RX 7900 XT, the performance is more than doubled. Even though we get 8330 FPS, the GPU utilization often stays below 90%, so here we hit the Xeon's limit once again. Skull and Bones is a recent addition to my tests. The game is very demanding and very poorly optimized. Even with high graphical preset, we are still CPU limited. RX 6650 XT delivers 2204 FPS, but the utilization is staying somewhere in between 85 and 95 percent. Switching to RX 7900 XT does not bring much extra to the table. The performance is marginally better, 3019 FPS, so the good old EFI 2666 V3 is the main bottleneck in this game. F123 is a fast-paced racing game with a decent optimization. Testing medium preset with RX 6650 XT, we get 154-182 FPS. The GPU utilization hovers somewhere around 95%, so in this case, if i2666 V3 and AMD RX 6650 XT are a very well-balanced combo. The power consumption of the system in this test stays somewhere around 315 watts. AMD RX 7900 XT is able to further improve the results and we get 197-266 FPS, which is very impressive for such an old service CPU like E5 2666 V3. At the same time, the GPU utilization is somewhere around 60%. So yeah, CPU is still the bottleneck, but what's interesting is that the power consumption is actually lower than with RX 6650 XT. In this case, the system consumes only somewhere around 280 watts. 
Apparently, RX 7900 XT at low utilization is more efficient than RX 6650 XT at maximum load. Hell Divers 2 is another recent addition to my tests, but just like many other shooters, this one does not have a built-in benchmark, so I have to actually play the game. And that means that the results are not very consistent. Nonetheless, here are the numbers. With medium preset and native 1080p resolution, RX 6650XT renders 6271 FPS, with average GPU utilization somewhere around 90%. So, as you can see, there is not much room left for GPU improvements. And that can be seen with RX 7900 XT that is not able to improve the results and we get about the same score 5376 FPS. Please beware that with RX 7900 XT I ended up in a more intense battles, where the performance was CPU limited even more, that's why the 1% lows are worse. RX 7900 XT utilization was often below 60% mark, so once again, E5 2666v3 is the big bottleneck. Rainbow Six Extraction is rather old by now, but it is still a popular game. Luckily for me, it has a built-in benchmark. Here I test medium preset with the native 1080p resolution, and RX 6650 XT scores 148, 199 FPS, which is very good for the veteran Xeon E5 2666v3 paired with the budget RX 6650 XT. RX 7900 XT is a total overkill for this Xeon. We get 212 and 245 FPS, which is better than what we had with RX 6650 XT, but the GPU utilization of just 60-70% shows us that we need a much stronger CPU to fully utilize RX 7900 XT. Fortnite is still loved by many, and here I test a DirectX 12 with a low graphical preset and a 1080p native resolution. Unlike many other shooters, here we have the replay function, which means that I can play around, save it, and then use replays to produce consistent benchmark numbers. And that's exactly what I did. With RX 6650 XT, we have 113, 157 FPS. The GPU utilization stays around 90% mark most of the time, thus it's another example where E5 2666v3 and RX 6650XT are well balanced with each other and there is no much room left for a stronger GPU. Using RX 7900XT we can confirm the theory, the results are slightly better, the FPS marker goes up to 134-194 FPS, but the GPU utilization is somewhere around 70% mark, so it's the maximum for E5 2666v3. Counter-Strike 2, the game for the toxicity lovers and probably one of the most annoying to test, because the FPS mark really depends on what the players are doing on the map. Here I test low graphical preset with a native 1080p resolution and RX 6650XT delivers 8868 FPS. At the same time, the GPU utilization is pretty bad. It stays somewhere between 60 and 70%, with frequent drops below 60%. And that suggests that better GPU won't help achieving higher FPS in Counter-Strike 2. As expected, with RX 7900 XT, we don't get much better results. We still get the same 9079 FPS, and the GPU utilization is less than 50%. Finally, the finals. The game has much larger maps compared to Counter-Strike 2, and we also have destructive environment everywhere, so the CPU load is even higher. With medium preset, RX 6650XT renders 6405 FPS, but the GPU is heavily underutilized with frequent drops below 60% usage, so a stronger, much stronger CPU is badly needed here. Just like in Counter-Strike 2, in the finals, RX 7900XT cannot rescue the situation. The results almost identical. 6507 FPS. Now, if I combine all these results across 10 different games tested, combination of E5 2666v3 with RX 6650XT scores 7722 FPS. The same system with RX 7900XT delivers 9757 FPS. 
So, the conclusion time, and what we can see is that the X99 platform with the good old Xeon E5 V3 CPUs are still providing a phenomenal performance for the money. For this motherboard with this CPU I have paid just 65 euros, and if you would have to add something on top for memory it would be about 10-15 euros, well uh, somewhere we can say 80 euros, and that includes 25% Swedish VAT tax. For that money you could possibly get only i3-12100 on the used market. So in terms of a value this is unbeatable. At the same time we can see that even AMD RX 6650XT is not fully utilized in all games using Xeon E5 2666V3. So if you have some extra money or you can afford spending a bit more on your gaming computer, then I would suggest you go in the secondhand hunting or even AliExpress or just look for bargains on Amazon. Amazon, eBay, whatever, and get yourself AMD AM4 based system, Intel LJ1700 based system, or even Intel LJ1200 based system. Other than that, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and valuable. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.